Hello, everybody. Hi. I've had some technical issues here with my laptop, so I am broadcasting from my phone. Uh, good, good evening to you. Uh, good afternoon to you. Uh, today is a beautiful day, May 3rd. Uh, it's first Sunday. It's the day in which we commune with God, with the uh, communion, uh, remembering the Lord, uh, drinking the blood of his body and eating the bread of his body. Uh, today is a beautiful day. I want to say thank you for uh, Pastor Simeon for the invite to come and to share a word with you. I will not be before you long. I uh, preached earlier at church today, and uh, I'm excited to be here with you. I live in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Uh, I'm trying to get my scripture out on my Bible here. I live in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Uh, it's right around the Great Lakes here. It's a beautiful little city. Uh, today, I want to talk about, since it's the Communion Sunday, I want to talk about remember the Lord. Remember the Lord. This is a, a function. This is a function that we must continual, continually do as Christians, as brothers and sisters in the faith. We must never forget God, and we always must remember the Lord. It's like this, brothers and sisters. When things are going the wrong direction in our lives, we must remember the Lord. When blessings and prosperity is all around us, we must remember the Lord. What I want to do is, and, and Jesus, Jesus told us, he said, do this in remembrance of me, right? So what I want to do is I want to, I want to bring you into Jonah chapter two, Jonah chapter two. Now I tell you, Jonah I, I love this guy. He's like one of my favorite characters in the Bible. I believe that Jonah gets a bad rap. I believe that Jonah uh, probably reacted like many of us would. And here's why. Now, as you know, Jonah was in the northern part of Israel. Uh, he was a, an Israelite. He was part of the children of Israel. Uh, the chosen people, God's chosen people, right? And God called Jonah to go further north into Assyria. Okay, now let's talk about Assyria a little bit. As you remember, you already know that Assyria had captured Israel because they had disobeyed God and hadn't been following directions and were the directions of God. And so, he has a Syrian, God has a Syrian come in and capture his chosen people. He makes them slaves, right? And all of a sudden, these people go into treachery. In fact, the scripture says that uh, God says this was a great city, right? Not only was it a great city, I imagine it as like some of the wonderful cities across the world, including Johannesburg, uh, Las Vegas, Los Angeles, Paris, right? You got these great cities across the world, right? And these cities are cities in which everything is available to you. I mean, you, there's, if you come in as a tourist, you can see great sights. If you're looking for bad things, you can find bad things. Nineveh, Nineveh took the children of Israel and they would literally cement them in the city's walls. Nineveh was, would behead the children, uh, the, the, the people that they captured, the slaves, and stick them on the fence posts. Right, the top of the fence post. Nineveh would cut the ears off the slave and wear them as ornaments. These are the people that God told Jonah to go preach to. Now, uh, uh, uh. see, this is why Jonah didn't want to go to Nineveh. Because these are the same people that tortured his people. These people tortured his people and enslaved them. And God says, Jonah, I want you to leave here and I want you to go preach to the people that tortured your people. 
Now, I don't, I don't know about you, brothers and sisters. I don't know about you. Thank goodness I'm not God because I might have been like, dear God, I'm not going to know. this. I'd be like, wait a minute. I can't be hearing from the Lord. I know God is not asking me to go to Nineveh. Nineveh? Lord, this can't be you, right? That's kind of the response that I might have. You know, you got to go into the enemy's camp and preach the gospel. Now, not only, not only did he have to go into the enemy's camp, brothers and sisters, but scripture tells us when he got on that boat, he was by himself. He didn't have a contingency with him. Even even Moses, he had a relationship with Pharaoh, right? They knew Moses. Even Elijah, Elisha, the apostles, they had scribes and other disciples around them when they went and preached the gospel. But Jonah had to go to Nineveh, this great city, all by himself. Now, let me go ahead and get to the text. I'm almost done, folks. I'm almost done. It says, Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly and said, I cried by reason of my affliction unto the Lord, and he heard me out of the belly of hell cried I, and thou heardest my voice. Brothers and sisters, Remember the Lord. When you find yourself in a really bad situation and it feels like hell, Jonah says, I found myself in hell. When you find yourself in a really bad situation, remember the Lord. Now, I don't know about you. I don't know about your life, but I know about mine. And I can tell you, brothers and sisters. There's been times in my life where it felt like hell. There's been times in my life where I didn't know which way to turn. I didn't know which way to go. And it felt really bad. It was pain. And all I could do was put my face in the ground, get my knees on the ground. And all I could do was cry to the Lord. Oh, God, help me. Oh, Lord, help me. Has anybody ever prayed that prayer? Say, God, please help me. Has anybody ever been in that situation? Wow, that's a bad situation to be in. But if we remember the Lord, there is a savior in dark times. He goes on, Jonah goes on in verse three. For thou has cast me into the deep. In the midst of the seas, the floods can pass all about me, all thy billows and thy waves pass over me. Now, check this out. God threw him in the sea. Woo. God threw him in the sea. See, sometimes, sometimes God will put you into an uncomfortable situation to get you out of what you were planning on doing and get you to do what he wants you to do. Hmm. Has anybody been there in an uncomfortable situation? You make all these great plans. Oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this. And then all of a sudden, the waves come. You're thrown into the sea and it doesn't happen the way you want it to happen. And God says, I'm going to bring you out of what you plan to do, David. And I'm going to have you do what I want you to do. I said, go to Nineveh. Now, let's talk about this Tarshish business really quick. This Tarshish business, right? Jonah wanted to go to Tarshish. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. What is the Tarshish in your life? Think about this. What is Tarshish in your life? See, Tarshish was a place that we haven't been able to put on the map. Some say India. Some say Africa. You know, there's clues. There were peacocks. There was gold. There was silver. You know, so we really don't know where it is on the map. But that's not my point. See, Jonah 
wanted to silence God's voice. So he wanted to run from his assignment and go to another place. Do you have a place in your life in which you try to run and silent God's voice? Maybe I need to make this clearer. Maybe I need to make this clear. I remember times where I wanted to go to the club, at the dance hall, and party, and hang out. Anybody been there? I wanted to silence God's voice and do what I wanted to do, right? I know there's times where I've been to the casino. I wanted to go to the casino and, and play blackjack, you know, hang out and have fun. <laughs> I wanted to silence God's voice. There's other things. You put your own incident in there. You put your own Tarsus in there. Some people go and try to have physical relationships outside of marriage. Tarsus. Okay? Follow God's directions. Let's get it moving. Let's get it moving. Verse 4. I love this verse. It says, Then I said, I am cast out of thy sight, yet I will look again Toward thy holy temple. Ooh. 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 Imagine. Imagine when, when everything is bad in your life and then you still don't hear from God. Things are bad in your life, but you can't even hear God's voice. He says, then I said, I am cast out of your sight. It's dark down there in this water. Yet, see, this is the part right here. Yet, this is the turnaround. Yet, it says, I will look again to thy holy temple. Huh. God says, remember me. Right? I'm your help. I'm your very present help. You know, let's talk about this coronavirus for a moment. It's ravishing the world. Last time I looked, there were over 200,000 deaths. I remember when New York, uh, New York they were averaging uh, 100 deaths a day. You know, here in my city, Grand Rapids, people act like nothing's going on. They're not wearing their masks. They're roaming around, having close contact with one another. I I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, this is the time to remember the Lord. Remember the Lord. When, when times like this are going on, if there's a flu in the area, there's virus in the air, you got to imagine this. Uh, that last plague that Moses had told Pharaoh about, and he's going to kill the first, God said, I'm going to kill the firstborn of all the babies, in, firstborn son, and they had to put the blood on the doorpost. You know the story. This was a virus, the death angel. It was a death angel. It was in the air, and it was there to kill. But he told the children of Israel, remember the Lord. And he used red blood as their symbol to remember the Lord. Brothers and sisters, I put this red tie on for you today. I want you to remember the blood. Remember the Lord. Remember the Lord. Remember the Lord. That what he did for you on the cross, he shed his blood. This is the living God. Huh, this is Mary's baby. This is the lily in the valley, right? This is the will in the will. Remember the Lord, what he's done for you. Jonah goes on to say, down, I'm going to skip down a couple verses. Mm, verse 7, he says, when my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord. I'm sorry, folks. Somebody's trying to call me on my Facebook. Let's see if I can. Somebody's calling me, but okay, hopefully we're good to go. When, I, when my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer came in unto thee, into thy holy temple. Hmm. See here? See there? When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer came in unto thee, into thine holy temple. Hmm. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. When my soul fainted, I remembered the Lord and my prayer came into thy holy temple. I'm seeing, you know what I'm seeing? Woo, 
Woo! You know what I'm seeing right now? I'm seeing a vision. I'm seeing God's angels all around the throne. And they're shouting, holy, holy, holy. Thank you, Jesus. They're shouting, holy, holy, holy. Shout it with me, brothers and sisters. Holy is your throne. Holy, holy, holy. Thank you, Father God. When my soul fainteth, I get on my knees and I shout out, I cry out to the Lord, Lord, help me. Holy, holy, holy. Brothers and sisters, can you see Jesus at the throne? Woo! Can you see Jesus at the throne of God, sitting at the right side of God? You know what I just saw? I saw Stephen being stoned. Mm. Remember they dragged Stephen out and they stoned Stephen? The kids stoned him. The babies stoned him. The women stoned him. The men stoned him. Oh, and guess what he saw? Woo! Remember the story? He saw Jesus standing at the throne, looking down on his friend, Stephen. Remember that? Jesus got up from his sitting position and he stood up and he looked down. Uh, brothers and sisters, imagine in your spiritual mind, Jesus is standing for you. Hmm. Jesus is standing for you. He's looking down for you. Send your prayers to the holy throne. Send your prayers to the holy temple. Make your requests known to God. Mm. Brothers and sisters, I'm done. I want you to remember the Lord. Remember the Lord. In good times and bad times, remember the Lord. He's going to answer. He's going to answer you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I love you, beloved. I love you.